I'm really pleased that there's been a, sh a torch um, shone on this issue, because if we have in our schools children fearful of going to school, and that's not acceptable to me, it shouldn't be acceptable to any parent, regardless of what their faith is, and particularly where teachers themselves are actually part of the problem. And I think we need to really look long and hard at why we have got the, the staff who are teaching um, faith as a subject, which is, I think, required in all schools up until the age of 16, I might be corrected, um, up to the age of 16, they need to have the contextual um, understanding of every faith. So unless they have that, they really are not in the position to give an impartial, fair reflection of faith. The first point in which this really came to my attention was last year when we saw the conflict between Hindu communities and Muslim communities in Leicester. And I think for many of us, many researchers and media platforms alike were shocked, but also uh, came to these issues with, with great ignorance, actually. Um, the kind of language that was being used, um, the anti-Hindu slurs that were being used were incredibly unfamiliar. Um, and it made it difficult to understand what the Hindu community was facing and also to provide comment on that. And I became very interested in, in what this was, being that my background is counter-terrorism, counter-extremism, to see that there is a community facing this level of hate and to know so little about it was, was profoundly shocking for me and inspired me to then look into the issues last year and publish uh, the first and still only UK extensive report on, on the conflict in Leicester. Um, and then to now look at what is anti-Hindu hate. And a sensible place to start is to look at schools, because not only are they a place where we see all communities being brought together in a neutral space, they're also a place in which schools can actually play a role in creating a more cohesive and equal future and hopefully deter things like Leicester, the conflicts that we saw last year happening again. Real response was, was one of what are the schools doing then? Why are they not seeing this? Why are we having an issue with schools reporting and recording on anti-Hindu hate? And just to give you a flavour of what kind of hate we were seeing, we had an incident where a young woman had beef thrown at her because she is Hindu. We had a young boy have to change school three times in East London because he was bullied in each and every school for being Hindu. We had school children refusing to go to school because of the bullying that they were facing. We had children being told by Christian peers that they were going to go to hell unless they came to Jesus and children being told by Muslim peers that if they did not convert to Islam, the bullying would persist. So we saw that it was multifaceted, it was coming from multiple directions, ideologies. And then what was worse, were teachers were playing into the prejudice in certain cases. There were schools, the reports from certain schools of teachers that were in fact teaching a reductive and in some places, prejudice approach to Hinduism, bringing caste into the classroom at sort of 14, 15 years old as a part of teaching on religion is absolutely inappropriate when every other religion is taught in a positive way to talk about cohesion, to bring about equality. The really difficult subjects don't come until A level. And even then Rishi will talk about how caste is possibly even inappropriate to bring into a discussion and any potential links um, to, to India and Hinduism at A level. But we were talking about young children being exposed to, to this. Not only that, constant references to multiple gods and polytheism without looking at the spiritual nature of the faith, but instead teaching it from what I call an Abrahamic faith lens. There aren't enough resources because it seems like not many schools or not many teachers, or well, not many schools opt for GCSE Hinduism, simply because it's just very difficult to deal with. Um, I know in my school, my colleague who teaches the GCSE students, um, I kind of suggested that he open it up to the students and uh, well, he did. And they actually opted for Islam as the second religion. Why? Because it was just nice and convenient and easy for them because it paralleled Christianity is within the same conceptual framework. 
so much easier to deal with. Um, and students, you know, sometimes obviously like to take the simpler approach to make life easy for them. So she said there was a, there's a there's a an, a dearth of material, and she said you know you really need to work on things, and it's given me a few thoughts. But that aside, why is it that teachers or why is it that schools don't really want to handle this stuff? Um, because it, it's seemingly quite complex. I mean, when I went through various philosophies, and she said there's so much, and I said, well, what I want you to do is to think about uh, philosophers like Descartes, like um, Hume, like Derrida. I said, you're, you, and Plato, you're spanning an entire history of Western philosophers. I said, now box that together and call that a religion of Europeanism. I said, now it feels mammoth. So you're dealing with something, you, you're calling it a religion and you're dealing with something that's quite big and really unfairly judging it. It needs to be understood on its own terms and within its own framework. And this is, the, this is really the root of, of quite the problem. Um, so one thing is you can have violence, if you, I'm going to use that word, okay, there's physical of course, but there's also verbal. Um, and Charlotte's hinted at some of the, um, the, the language that is used, but also at a conceptual level. Because what happens is that when we're starting to um, really kind of undermine concepts of another culture, we're then eroding their way of looking at themselves. And so each culture needs has its own framework, it has its own conceptual framework, it has its own linguistic framework, and it has its own vocabulary, of course, its own lexicon. And that culture needs to be understood in its own terms. Mm -hmm.